Hey folks, it's your main man Ian. I'm here with Jax. Jax has a young yes. Border Collie Hound Dog mix. And we're working with him here on his prong collar. He's doing really good. Um, I want to just talk a little bit about the prong collar and how we use it and go over some of this for his owners and also anybody who's out there trying to use the prong collar in the right way. There's a lot of confusion around the prong collar. I met some people last weekend from the UK. They were actually groomers. They hated the prong collar. I attempted to explain to them how to use it. They weren't interested. So this video is not for them. But if you are interested in learning how the prong collar works, both at a high level, a low level, with rewards, without rewards, with a young, really smart dog, and you wanna see the capabilities of what can be done with treats and the prong collar, this video is for you. So, first thing you're gonna notice when I'm working with the dog is I'm a lot of times I'm not even looking at the dog. I'm looking away from the dog on purpose. This dog's done three weeks of training. He's done a lot of training for his breed. He's really smart. Now is the time for me to start acting normal and not staring at him all the time and walking with him in the way I would if I was walking him down the street like this. If I do all the training right now like this and then I go out in public and I start walking like this, he's not gonna know what is going on because everything I've done was like this. So I'm purposefully gonna be changing my body language so that I'm not helping him more than is necessary. I'm purposefully gonna be changing the way that I'm using food so I'm not helping him more than is necessary with the food. With the prong collar though, I'm actually gonna be using it more than is necessary because I want him to get really used to the sensation of the prong collar. He's a sensitive dog. And it's important that we use the prong collar when the dog is doing the right thing. Okay, let me say that one more time. It's very important we use the prong collar when the dog is doing the right thing and we reward them for responding to it at a low level and at a high level with this particular dog. Okay, or he's going to be a screamer and you pull on that prong collar and he's going to ah! and throw a tantrum. Okay, so he was... I don't think he was in a command there, so I don't care. Good boy. Now, with mom and dad, when you get him home, you may not be at this level of training just yet. You may want to watch some of our YouTube videos on working with the prong collar without distractions or with low distractions. This is going to be a higher level of distraction session. So this is the more advanced prong collar training, okay? He's had a lot of reps in where we asked him to do stuff and we gave him food and it was very simple. So a camera person will walk with me, which is a huge distraction because Ajax wants to be with her. So he's going to be distracted. He's not going to know who to walk with, first of all. Let's go. One thing to think about is changing my position that he's on. He's not on the side that my treat pouch is on. That's going to be harder for him. The dog's naturally going to want to be on the side that the treat pouch is on because they're going to look up. They're going to see my hand here with food. Good boy. So you could see he's just doing this auto sit. That's what I like to see. I'm going to say down. Look at my foot down. I want to be clear. I'm not going like this. I'm going like this. I'm using as much pressure as I would use on my gas pedal in my Lexus. I'm not using as much pressure I was used on my gas pedal in a big monster truck or something. I'm just pushing like this down. I apply pressure down no down you can see there's some confusion there I take the leash through my foot like this I make it a little shorter and I pull him down good I do pay him that might have been a new experience for him I just said it one time I didn't do this body language down my foot told him to go down. I drop the leash here, down. I repeat the command. We don't typically say stay. We just repeat the command or tell the dog good job. Down. Uh, you can see, I can still use a hand motion. That's fine. No. No, down. No. Down. Good. Okay. 
it seems like this video is just going to primarily focus on his down command because this is where he's needing the most work holding commands and not expecting constant food but understanding he's doing it because he has to do it though we would like him to like to do it he doesn't really have a choice he has to do it down down you notice where i'm not looking i'm not staring at him if i'm like this and then i turn like this he's just gonna follow me good boy do you notice the position of his hips that, sh that shifted that position is indicating he's relaxed Come in close. I know I'm intense, but don't be scared of me, okay? And for you, you might even want to go like that and just focus on him. Good. Now in this down position to get the dog to hold it down, typically I'm not gonna call the dog from a down from far away. Typically I'm gonna pay them in position for staying there. And pretty soon, I'm not gonna pay them for being in a down command. So down command primarily is about being calm and just waiting patiently. When it comes to calling the dog over to me, walking with me in distraction rich environments, those are the areas recall and walking with me. I will use food a lot longer with those commands. With the down command, I'm sooner going to say, hey man, you just have to do it. Good boy, good. You could see how the anticipation of wanting food, it makes him want to get out of the command. Good boy. Good. It doesn't take much to create a distraction, folks. Test the dog's obedience. Just even tossing a piece of bark is a distraction. Good boy. Good. Good boy. You could even step over the dog. No. Down. Nuh uh. Down. You can see how I'm moving into his space here. This is to kind of encourage him to lay down with his hips to the side. He's not laying with his hips to the side. I'm not going to stress that right now because he's pretty calm. But if you notice your dog tends to lay down and constantly get up, you might want to encourage them, hey, lay with your hips to the side. I even do little things like this, picking up the leash. So let's be clear. I'm using the leash pressure to make him do it. I'm still rewarding him with food. No. I'm having him hold these commands for longer and longer around distractions. Good boy. Let's go. I said earlier I was gonna mainly focus on, on stay and down right now, which I am, but I do wanna still show you how I use the prong collar to reinforce all the commands during this phase. But we just worked him really hard at holding that down. So I'm not gonna make the rest of this little session super crazy challenging. That was a really big challenge and he did great. So just walk with me and follow me around and I'll narrate what I'm doing. I pull the leash. Let's go. Good boy. Place. I pull the leash over here. Good. Let's go. I pull the leash. Sit. I pull the leash. Good. Down. I pull the leash. Good. Let's go. I pull the leash. Good. Sit. Good. Down. Good. Let's go. Good. Place. Good. Now, the thing I want to emphasize, I'm using the prong collar even though he's going to do it. If I use the prong collar when he's going to do it, he associates the prong collar with wanting to do it and he's going to do it better and faster. If I only use it when he's messing up, he's not going to necessarily respond to it positively. You could see the dog become stressed. You'll see the dog put the brakes on. Maybe they'll start crying. So it's important you use it when the dog is doing things properly let's go good boy what a good boy huh good boy. just something as simple as a comb could be helpful to practice the dog walking next to you i'm testing them 
Do they understand how to follow you around objects or is this leash gonna get caught on the other side of a mailbox or something? He already knows. No, I know how to follow these people. Good job, buddy. Notice my body language is very neutral. I'm just walking like a normal person here who doesn't even have a dog with them. That's actually the goal, folks. You just walk like a normal person who doesn't have a dog, but you have a dog following you around. It's freaking amazing. No. No. Good. There, I did set a boundary and was telling him, hey man, you're overthinking it. I didn't tell you to go to your bed. I did give him food still because he responded really well and he came over to me and he did well. So, like I said at the beginning of this video, the later part of the prong collar training involves using the prong collar when the dog's already gonna do it, rewarding them sometimes when you see exceptional behavior, not always rewarding. Uh-uh down and using the prong collar with varying degrees of pressure changing the way you're using the leash changing the way your body language is and creating distractions on purpose so you and the dog can learn hey when do i need to reward when do i need to use more pressure oh he's getting a little scared i got to use more food oh he's only doing it because i have food I man get this food out of here you know so more importantly than anything folks i just wanted to show you what's possible with a young dog He's maybe not even six months old. Within three weeks of training with the prong collar, you could see he's doing great with his obedience commands. And we'll take him out in the real world soon, and you'll see he'll do this in the real world too, folks. As long as we're reasonable about the level of distractions and the amount of time he's out there, he'll do great in low to medium level distractions for short periods of time. But realize this training session and doing distractions, it helps us so when we go to places with more distractions, we know Oh man, do I need to use food? How much food? Do I need to use the prong collar? How much? And then we get a, can gauge how good the session's going based on how it does, how he does in areas like this, okay? Remember, as always, folks, we don't blame them, we train them. Let's go. And if you've got a little dog like this, please bring them to me because he's very trainable, but he's part hound dog. He's got strong personality. Without training, he just would be borderline nightmare. Oh, but, but with training, he's the sweetest dog. He's very trainable, and he really wants to be a good boy. Oh, and he smells good. Okay, until next time, we'll see you then, folks.